Master Roderick, he's on top of him. <laughs> Drunken pigs. <laughs> Call themselves aristocrats. Where are their heads and graces now, landlord? Where are their fine ways and fancy manners? Crapulent tosspots. <laughs> and I'm supposed to put them to bed. <laughs> uh, uh, dead drunk? Ten bottles. <laughs> Come on, squire. <laughs> Let's get you to a chap. Oh. Oh. Come on, red nose, and sober up. <laughs> oh, just look at you, you grog blossom, you wine skin, you bibulous sot. Why don't you drink yourself to death and do us all a favour? Hmm? What was that, Grant? Just um, asking how you were, sir. Tolerably well. Apart from a painful bruise on my left back. Oh, must have been where you fell. Yeah. Send to Master Roderick, Grant. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> How is he? Oh, he's drunk as a boiled owl. Oh, sir. poor lad. He's drowning his sorrows. Fanny Fowler has cast him off and he's lost a fortune. Another bottle, landlord. You've had enough, sir. The box on you, you scurvy knave. You presume to tell a gentleman how to drink. Patience, Roderick. It's time we were going home. I, uh, wouldn't go home, sir. Not tonight. Why not? Well, there's the question of the duel, sir. What duel? Sir Joshua Fowlaker presents his compliments and says he will attend upon you at 6.30 tomorrow morning on an affair of honour. And that he'll deal with Master Roderick a few minutes later. Impudent Let me have him first, Father. I'll shoot the ears off the scoundrel. I'll cut him to ribbon. But Roderick, he's a, he's a great duelist. He's the finest shot in five counties. He's killed seven men in duels, five with pistols, two with swords. And they say that two more will never walk again. Will he accept an apology? <laughs> uh, no. He says his wife and daughter have been insulted and it can only be wiped out in Enough. Blood. Come, let us eat, drink and be merry. Well, tomorrow we die. <laughs> Your servant is right, sir. Death comes to all men. For in life we are surrounded by death and it hath no season. And when I arrived this evening, I beheld on the roof of the inn an angel and in his hand he held a flaming sword. What was that? An angel with a flaming sword on the roof. <laughs> He's a visionary. No, he's not. Look at him. He's a canting preacher. No, I'm not so sure. When I came through the streets tonight, I passed a rider astride a pale horse. A pale horse? Why do you blanch, Roderick? Father, the rider of the pale horse is dead. Don't talk to me at death. I just got back from Amsterdam on yesterday's tide where the pestilence rages and the death carts roll through the streets to the sound of the bellman and the cries of the afflicted. Yes, well, there you are. <laughs> and you know what I say? Begun to care more Madeira. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, does anyone know a jest? I have one that never fails to set the table in a roar. What did the Bishop of Durham say to the French whore? <laughs> Please, I beg you, respect my cloth. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> what about you, sailor? Does thou know it? Uh, no, I, I, I think not. Well, shall I whisper it in thine ear? It will slay thee, I promise you. Mm. <laughs> oh, I knew you'd like it. Oh, it's a great jest. Oh, it's a steamer, is it not? It's never failed. Shall I tell you another one? Why not? Why be dull? For as preacher says, in life we're surrounded by... I've never seen the jest go so well. He's convulsed. He's not convulsed. He's dead. Well, you said he would slay you. I must have told you particularly well. Yeah. Oh, to die laughing, what a way to go. What a compliment to me. It is not your jest that killed him, but the plague. The plague? <laughs> One moment. We can't leave the poor wretch lying here. Uh, can't we? Well, you don't think I'm going to touch him. But you already have. Yes, well... <laughs> How do we, how can we be sure that it is the plague? I mean, knowing this place, it's more likely to be peace pudding. Have you seen the kitchens? No, but I have some knowledge of medicine. And see, he has the token. A token? Could be the spotted fever, that can kill you. But he came from Amsterdam, where the pestilence rages. Nope, it is the plague. Then where are the boils? There's always boils. Show me the boils. There are no boils, because the disease has gone inwards. 
festering and putrefying and raging like a forest fire until the victim dies, often with a jest on his lips and a glass in his hand. Oh, my God! You're a fine-looking lad. Will you not help me carry him to his chamber? Who, me? No, I'm quite delicate, really. I catch anything that's going, even from a distance. Well, we can't leave him here with his head in a plate. They say these times bring out the best in men or the worst. What is it to be with you, brother? Uh, we are not inhuman, sir, and you will not find us wanting, and we will not leave our brother with his head in a plate. Grunge will carry him to his chamber. <laughs> Grunge will not. You disobey me, Grunge. Yes. But Grunge, the contagion is carried on the breath. He isn't breathing. I've heard it comes from the touch. I've heard you can even catch it from the privy seat. No. <laughs> if it comes from anything, it comes from filth and squalor. You see, you're probably immune, Grunge. <laughs> may I speak, sir? No, you may not. Let him speak. You may speak, Grant. Death comes to all men. Oh. Prince or pauper, the rich man in his fine house, the poor man in his hovel. Death is a great leveller, and I'm just as likely to pop my clogs as you are. <laughs> then I must seek assistance elsewhere and summon a physician. But he doesn't need a physician. He's, he's dead. But we need one for the living, brother. We are all in danger here and must perforce remain. But to go abroad would spread the contagion and infect our good neighbours, and none of us would want that. No, indeed not. Of course. It goes without saying. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get out of here. Roderick, the worst thing you can do in a situation like this is to panic. Father, if you can think of a better time to panic, you tell me. I'm not waiting for the big boils and the blemishes. I'm certainly not hanging about the putrefying and the festering. <laughs> no, your voice, you fool. If anybody finds we've been in contact with this man, we'll be outcast. No one will come near us. We'll be shut up by order of the magistrates and fed through a grill. No, we must leave here unobserved through yonder casement. It leads onto a flat roof and safety. I use it often to avoid the bailiffs. But we must hurry before that canting preacher raises the alarm. Yes, but how do we reach it? Well, we'll stand upon grunge. You go first, now follow. Yes, but what a grunge? To stay means almost certain death. Roderick, it must be obvious to the dullest brain that there is no one here low enough for grunge to stand upon. A gentleman may stand upon grunge, but grunge may not stand upon a gentleman. Ergo, he must remain. Mm, seems a little harsh. Well, it may seem harsh, but Grunge understands. He knows his station in life. I can't, Grunge, bend your shoulder. You can whistle. I can what? Whistle. You disobey me? No, I've resigned. I need three months' notice for that. Now, come before we're discovered with the body. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh. Everything to your satisfaction, sir. Yes. yes. And you, shipmate? Arr. Is the room to your liking? <laughs> Arr, it's all the ship shape and bristle fashion, me arty. Arr. And did you enjoy your peas pudding? Arr, it's put a fresh breeze up my spinach and blown out me in top gallons. And I'm just ready to... Wait a moment. He didn't say that. How do you know? Because he's got his head in a plate. Uh, too much grog, I'm afraid. You know what sailors are. I was trying to save him from any embarrassment. Oh, but he looks... Dead. Dead drunk. Uh, well, we can't have him in here, then. Come on, get him out of the way. Give me a hand with him. Oh, me? Yes, sir, you, sir. Oh, but I'm not really supposed to lift anything. Oh, across that hole, sir. Very well, but... Quickly, then. Oh, where are you taking him? To his room, sir. Well, have a care. He's died of the plague. The plague? Plague! I've informed the watch and summoned a physician. Oh, I hope you were circumspect, sir. And we don't want to start a panic. I've got a living to earn. Exactly. The worst thing we can do is panic. I was discreet. Oh, well, I'd better get him out of sight, then. <laughs> well, we'll, uh... We'll be going now, Preacher. We'll, uh, bid you adieu. Well, what about the contagion? I, I, don't worry, Preacher. We, we'll keep ourselves to ourselves. I, I've never been much of a mixer. And I'm painfully shy. We'll probably go and sit in the middle of the field somewhere. But the most important thing is to get away before the panic starts. Stop! Oh, Oh! Ah! No way out at the back. Even if there were, the streets are full of people. When they heard you were trapped, Father, they lit a great fire, and now no one sleeps. Poor souls, do they fear for my life? I don't think so. They're roasting a pig. <laughs> the English! Let this be a lesson to you, Roderick. Where the plague's concerned, mm, you're on your own. Mm, in truth, there's nothing empty the tavern faster than the plague. Mm. <laughs> this is the Black Death. Or the raging pestilence. Or the malignant spotted fever with the purple bits. <laughs> that gets the feet moving. Hey, it is not death I fear if I can face it sword in hand. No. 
It's this infernal waiting. This is my last night on Earth. I want a woman. Roderick, with your reputation, that's always been difficult. But with the plague, I should think it's nigh on impossible. <laughs> but I haven't got the plague. I know I haven't. What are the symptoms again? Oh, fever, latitude, and the tokens. Then it takes one or two courses. Quick and peaceful or slow and painful. The quick and peaceful is not always quick, and it's not always peaceful, but the <laughs> slow and painful, well, it's certainly slow and undeniably painful. On the other hand, you can always recover from the slow and painful. Never recover from the quick and peaceful. <laughs> so the slow and painful is best. If you can get over the boils. Where do you get the boils? Under the armpits. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Oh, oh no, mercy! I have the tokens! See here, one as large as a florin! I'm a dead man! Uh, no, there's another one on the other side. It is your nipple. <laughs> oh. Roderick, how many times must I tell you not to panic? It really is the worst thing you can do. Grunge panicked. Where is grunge? Near there. What are you doing? It's our stuck. It's like a deserter, like a rat leaving a sinking ship, and now the tub of lard's wedged in his own boat hole. Well, how did he get up there? He probably jumped. Fear can do that to a man. He's probably covered more distance than a performing flea. <laughs> Shouldn't we get him down? Yes, I suppose I'm sick of looking at his fat backside anyway. Roderick! <laughs> a guinea. He says he was admiring the view. Done! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, 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 no doubt about it. They're a wonderful sight. What <laughs> that? The stars. There can't be much wrong with a world that has so much beauty in it. <laughs> it also has the plague in it. Oh, the plague. We thought you were leaving to avoid it. No, plague doesn't worry me. Not with my abracadabra necklace. <laughs> Proof against anything. I took it from my father's neck the day he was struck down by the Bristol coach. <laughs> a heathen talisman, I spit upon it. No, you can't do better than a rabbit's foot in these circumstances. It's always brought me luck. Fools, superstitious fools, to put your faith in such trickery. All you need is a simple copper bracelet. Now, that renders me virtually immune from the plague, fever, St. Anthony's fire, and the rising of the types. <laughs> We've been saying a few prayers over our poor brother. You didn't get too close, did you? No, but we had to find out who he was. That meant searching his apparel. Yeah. Who was he? Has he got any money? Because I'm thinking of applying for compensation. No, he was just a poor sailor. He had a clean shirt, a few coins in his pocket. Oh, and this simple copper bracelet on his wrist. <laughs> what? A sort of talisman, I suppose. If only he'd put his faith in the Lord, if only I'd spoken to him. For I saw an angel upon the roof holding a flaming sword. And I saw the rider aside the pale horse. And last night in the yard, I saw a fox kill three hens whilst the rooster crowed. Don't you start, Grant. <laughs> All this means we must turn our minds to higher things. Oh, you mean the window? I mean we must make our peace with her. Ah, I see him at yonder table. Who? <laughs> he wears a black cloak with a cowl. In one hand, he bears a scythe, with the other, he casts a dice. Beyond the table? Aye. Which end? <laughs> what do you mean, which end? Can't you see he's off his religious rocker? No, 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 it's a, it's a vision. Not everyone can see them. You, you, have, to be, you have to be receptive. I think, um, <clears throat> I think I can see him. <laughs> Tall fellow. It is death. The man who sees him is marked. No, I was wrong. <laughs> Shadow. <laughs> I fear for my immortal soul, for I have sinned. You, preacher? Yes, I was rash and profligate in my youth. I gambled and fornicated. There, I've said it. I feel better. For they say confession is good for the soul.